I, I have chosen key people to minister to you, key people that are moving in new prototypes, that are involved in new prototypes, that are moving into what the Lord is doing uh, in new ways with us. And this next speaker that are, is so incredible, first of all, She's uh, an ordained minister. She's ministered in so many avenues. But, you know, you find certain people who know how to talk. You know, some people, they're incredible, but they don't make any sense when they say anything. Uh, and uh, I'm, uh, Pam will always say to me, why don't you try that one more time? Because she's one that makes sense. Uh, and uh, this lady is also the top Toastmaster uh, in this area of, of speaking. I want you to welcome one of our dear, dear ministers of the gospel, Stella Timmons. And let's stand up and welcome her here to come and minister to us. But what I heard the Lord saying, this is a prophetic word for all of us today, is that if you came to this conference or you're on the web and you know that the Lord has said to you that it's time for an assignment shift, you're in the right place. We're going to shift in some of our assignments. But journeys come from progress. Everything in life is a journey. And what I want to do is just talk about some people's journeys. You heard a little bit about mine. Let's talk about Joseph. We know the story of Joseph. We know that he was the father's favorite son and the brothers hated him. And then as a teenager, he sold into slavery. And we know that what he went through in slavery. But do you know that he had to be aligned with Pharaoh to complete his assignment? You got to be aligned with somebody to complete your assignment. Think about all that he went through, all of those years, the years being in prison, and it was to get him to the place that he got aligned with Pharaoh. And then I think of Moses. Now, Moses in his life, it seems like God did things in 40 years increments, right? First 40 years. Then he decides he's got to go check on his people. The next 40 years, he's in the wilderness and the bush is burning. In the next 40 years, He's taken them into the promised land. So sometimes it seems like the assignment has taken a long time, but if you're aligned with the right person, the assignment comes. Amen. But what I want to say is that the law brings a curse. We know that, right? That's what it says in Galatians. The law brings a curse. And I want to read this to you. This is out of the Message Bible. Galatians 3.13, Christ redeemed us from that self-defeating, cursed life by absorbing it completely into himself. Do you remember the scripture that says, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree? The law said you couldn't hang on a tree or you would be cursed. That is what happened when Jesus was nailed to the cross. He became a curse and at the same time, he dissolved the curse. Y'all hear that? He took everything in his body to become a curse, but at the same time, he dissolved the curse so that we don't have to live under the curse. And so my assignment to you today is, once you've been delivered, what do you add to your life? We're talking about progression. How do we progress? So once you've been delivered from, what do you add to? And with that, I want us to go to 2 Peter. This is what I want to read. 2 Peter, and I'm going to start at, at, at chapter 1. And it says, Simon Peter, a bound servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who obtain like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and in Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things 
that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be the partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But this is what Peter's telling them. Remember, this is the end of Peter's life. And Peter is saying, I want, to, I want to put you in remembrance of something. I want to let you know what you have to add to since you've gone through. If anybody knew what it meant to go through, it was Peter. Did I lose it? Can y'all still hear me? Okay. So this is what he said. But also for this very reason, given all diligence, add to your faith nurture. I mean, add to your faith virtue. Now, one of those definitions of virtue is excellence. Add to your faith virtue and to, and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance kindness, uh, uh, God, uh, to kindness brotherly, brotherly love, and then add faith. If you do this, you will neither be barren or unfruitful. Now, let's talk about that word barren. Here is the word argos, A-R-G-O-S, and it's not talking about not having children. It says you will not be inactive, unemployed, lazy, useless, idle, or slow. Don't you like that? Peter said, you won't be barren, you won't be lazy if you add this. And let's look at what he says here. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and hath forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, or if you do these things, you will never stumble You'll never stumble if you do these things. If you add faith, virtue, knowledge, perseverance, if we add these things, we will not be barren. When we think about the fact that God's, we all started at the same place. Did you know that? Everybody was born in sin and conceived in iniquity, so everybody was born lost. We were all born lost. So there was a process that God brought into our lives to bring us to Christ. And then that's why when Paul was talking to the Galatians, he got so upset. He said, oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you've gone away from the truth? And the truth is who Jesus is, and he died from the cross. So when people ask me a question, Progress, where do we go from, him, from here? What I tell them is we have the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. That's going to get us through. Because one of these things about racism is that it is a spirit. Has anybody told you that lately? Because every problem, every trouble that I've gotten into from a decision that I made, at a choice that I made, it had nothing to do with my skin. It was all about sin. Amen. Come on now. Yeah. Now, everybody has their experience. I'm not going to say you haven't had an experience. I'm not going to say you haven't experienced injustice. I'm not going to say that. I'm just saying that when we make choices and decisions and we end up in problems, it's because of, of a decision... Yeah. And nobody's looking at your skin. Lawlessness is lawlessness. I don't care who does it. Sin is sin, and we need to call sin what it is. Or we don't progress. We stay in the same old mess. But once you have gone through, you got to add some faith to your virtue. And to your virtue, some knowledge. And to your knowledge, perseverance. And to perseverance, godliness. And to godliness, we have to add it to us. So what I heard the Lord tell me, and I heard it very specifically, 
yesterday. He said, I want you to have everybody to stand. Um, <laughs> come on. And what he said to me is, people on the web and people that came here, you know that it's time for an assignment shift. You remember, you called before the foundation of the world, gifts, talents, and abilities. God don't take those away. The call is the same, and the assignment shifts. Some people need to be realigned in some places so you can do your assignment. Some people need some new alignments or realignments, but something has to happen so that you can complete your assignment. Because it's just like in school. Remember in school, they gave us progress reports? And if the progress report wasn't good, they put you on a plan. And the plan was to raise the bar. See, everybody's not like Chuck. They didn't get all A's. Hey, I was thankful to get a C. Sometimes a D looked good. Come on now. Everybody wasn't born like that. Everybody don't get A's. But if you're not doing well, you put on a plan. So God has a plan for us to raise the bar so that we can complete the assignment that he's given us because he's putting us in the right alignment. So if you're in the wrong alignment, my word for you today is get in the right alignment so that God can complete your assignment. So this is what the Lord would have me to say to you. Say, Father. Father. I'm ready, I'm ready for an assignment shift. I want to be in the place that you've called me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. God bless you. Wow.